everybody welcome back to my channel thank you for clicking on this video if you're someone who enjoys talking about film consider hitting that subscribe button so of course being the end of the year it is time for me to give you guys what i consider to be the top 10 movies of 2020. the majority of the things on my list i have a review on if i don't i briefly review it on my monthly tier list for whatever month that may be either way goes i'll make sure to uh link all the full reviews or the monthly tier list where i do talk about the movie down in the description down below let's go ahead and get on with some honorable mentions the sound of metal a heavy metal drummer's life played beautifully by Riz Ahmed is thrown into free fall when he begins to lose his hearing. Happiest season. When Kristen Stewart's uh, character plans to propose to her girlfriend played by Mackenzie Davis while at her family annual holiday party discovers her partner hasn't yet come out to her conservative parents. We do have a really nice performance by Daniel Levy as well. I feel like he absolutely steals the show. The King of Staten Island, which is probably one of my most surprising movies of the year. Um, it does star Pete Davidson in this semi-autobiography comedy drama about Pete Davidson's growing up in Staten Island, including losing his father during the 9-11 attacks. And finally, Uncle Frank. Accompanied by his teenage niece, a gay literature professor reluctantly returns home to attend his father's funeral. I just want to let you guys know what my particular criteria are for my own personal top 10. I am a very, very simple type of gal. You guys, yes, I can be a little extra from time to time, but I'm very simple. The little things in life bring me joy. I'm not looking for technicality, best storytelling, best direction, cinematography, script, acting. I'm really not looking into all of that. I really just have three main criteria. You have to be, of course, memorable. You have to be entertaining. And of course, you have to impact me in some way, whether it's me bawling my eyes out or just really making me question myself, making me question life, reality whatever it may be, just impact me in some way. So real simple things, you guys. So out of the 110 movies that I did watch, these are the 10 movies that I consider to be the best of the year. Coming in 10th place would be Vivir Dos Veces, a Spaniard movie on Netflix, or Live Twice, Love Once. It's a beautiful story about Emilio embarking on a journey with his daughter and granddaughter to find his long lost true love. He is suffering from Alzheimer's and it is progressing very quickly. It's a beautiful, beautiful story. I love the way that this movie ends. Number nine, and that would be the half of it. You can find this one on Netflix. This is about Ellie, who is a high school student who has a little side hustle with the other students writing their papers. Ellie does does get approached by one of the football players to write him a letter to give to his crush Aster. Uh, the catch is that Ellie also has a crush on Aster. Number eight would be HBO's Bad Education. Now this is based on a true story. It does star Hugh Jackman and Allison Janney. And it is the story of a Long Island school, the superintendent and the assistant who actually embark on one of the largest like embezzlements in like the U.S. I think it was just the U.S. history. They literally stole so much fucking money. I personally have I never heard of this before but yet again I don't listen to the news so I miss a lot. Number seven would be Charlie Kaufman's I'm Thinking of Ending Things. This fucking movie you guys. A movie like has never ever ever made me feel as uncomfortable as this particular movie did. So weird and weird and like sucks you in and then it makes you uncomfortable but then it's memorable. I mean, it fits like all the fucking criteria, you guys. It's great. Moving on to number six, and that's going to be Troop Zero. This is on Amazon Prime. This is a movie that did come out earlier in the year. I, I think it came out like in January, it may have been. This is just one that's really, really stuck with me from the beginning of the year. I, I love it so much. It's about this girl named Christmas who is played by McKenna Grace. Um, who love science. We're in the 70s. We're in Georgia, I believe it is. This movie just has such a great message. When she found out that NASA was going to be holding a competition to record a message that's going to be sent out into space, she was on that. We have meeting you guys top five. Coming in in fifth place would be Hulu's 
Palm Springs. This is another one that I was really shocked on how much I truly enjoyed it. It is such a fun movie. It is more of a modern day, twistier version of like Groundhog's Day. But I guess like with all the murders and stuff, then it kind of falls within like Edge of Tomorrow in a way. Or Happy Death Day as well. So we are like in a time loop. Star Andy Samberg and Christian Milliot. Coming in fourth place would actually be what I had in first place at my best of 2020 so far and i know this movie is probably gonna be on nobody else's list but again it is my list and what i enjoy and it's really my cup of tea and that's going to be the hunt i know you guys some of your product like, what the fuck it might even be on some of your guys's worst of 2020 i don't give a fuck it did have a pushback uh due to the controversy of it i think the president had put his two cents in the movie as well but when does he keep putting his fucking two cents but i believe when the movie originally was supposed to come out there was some sort of a shooting i could be mistaken there was some something was going on you guys for having these rich assholes hunting these human beings for sport that is right they're hunting human beings for sport and it kind of makes fun i mean it's a satire movie you guys it makes fun of everybody it does star betty gilpin and hillary swank number three and this is a netflix original movie mall rainey's black bottom um this is a denzel washington produced film based on the play of the same name this viola davis does play mall rainey this is also chadwick boseman's last performance and he did absolutely wonderful i mean both viola and uh, chadwick they did absolutely they, they, they gave a great great performance Moving on to number two, and that's going to be another Netflix original, The Trial of Chicago 7. Right off the bat, you guys, the cast in The Trial of Chicago 7 is absolutely wonderful. I love it. I'm sure there's going to be awards left and right for all these actors. Out of everybody's performance, my favorite ones obviously was Sasha Baron Cohen. He did absolutely amazing in this film. I truly wish he would do more dramatic roles and kind of step aside from Borat, Dictator, Bruno type of movies. I'm really not a fan of those. I know that there's fanatics for those. The other one of course is Yaya Abdul-Mateen. I'm pretty sure I botched his name but he does absolutely wonderful. Including those two, we do also have Eddie Raymond, Mark Rylance, Jeremy Strong, Michael Keaton, and Joseph Gordon-Levitt. And this is based on a true story. It is a courtroom drama of the Chicago 8 originally. And then, you know, certain situations, we get to 7. It is based on the infamous 1969 trial of these 7 defendants charged by the federal government for conspiracy from a protest in Chicago in 1968. Eight. But coming in in first place, you guys, would be Onward. I absolutely adore Onward. It packs me in the sobbing, emotional, in every way roller coaster with this movie. I said it before and I'll say it again. We are in a magical, mystical world. We have elves. We have like these crazy ass unicorns centaurs biker fucking fairies magic we got guinevere who's the van mystical creatures in a modern day times they've forgotten the days of yore and we have a heartwarming little quest some people may have a uh, little trouble a little ish couple issues with the pacing on how long it takes them to get to certain destinations i personally don't think it takes them that long i think it has a really good pacing because if you think about it, if they got there super quick, then it would be like another issue of were they getting to this location super quick? Why is that? Like you can never make somebody happy. We got Tom Holland and Chris Pratt, you know, plain brothers, younger brother, older brother. I think it's a great movie. I, I, yes, my number one pick. It was number two earlier on in the year but we have moved it on up to number one because like i said it has impacted me in every so way i've rewatched this movie so many times and every fucking time i watch it i fucking cry i don't give a shit i cry of course like always you guys my list is not the right list it's just my list so no need to be nasty in the comment section below talking about i can't believe you have the hunt on there i can't believe you have onward and also on your list again 
my list go ahead and comment down below let me know what are your top 10 picks of 2020 if you're curious about what i consider to be the worst movies of the year head over to my instagram page i am doing a i'm actually going to be going live after this video so you guys aren't going to see it until later on you'll see it at the playback I consider to be the five worst uh, movies of 2020 um it's really hard for me to you know say something that's like terrible or bad but these five just really kind of irked me of course everybody has have a happy new year. Stay safe. I hope 2021 is way better than this year. Spread the word. When the ball drops, don't say happy new year. You need to scream. Jumanji!